So as we start part two, I will go to additional media and links to websites. And this is where I've included all of the um, individual sites and the apps that the students have been using um, to really be independent in the classroom and in a small group setting. Um, and I've also started to use um, some apps for some behavior plans. Um, so I'll talk about that um, and um, discuss how I've used that on an individual student basis. So um, the first site is um, polleverywhere.com and I actually uh, discovered this site at a uh, conference that I went to, um, the Title I conference last spring. Um, PollEverywhere.com I've used in both um, large and small group settings um, and as well as an individual basis both for um, feedback, um, assessment purposes, um, several types of polls and surveys, uh, gauging student interest on topics, um, just feelings about um, how they prefer to learn um, how they uh, would like to do things differently based on how projects went and um, as well as getting instant assessment. Um, I think it's also been beneficial for the students to um, see the results and not have their uh, name tied to the um, poll. Uh, the way I've been tracking this is having students assign the same iPod each day and then I can see the results uh, coming from which iPod. So even though they don't necessarily know that their result is um, tied to them, they think it's anonymous, it's tied to iPod 2, I can track which student um, gave which result. Um, so I'll just give some examples, um, polleverywhere.com um, slash Mrs. Garten is the site, so looks like it's logged me out here, so I need to log back in. So here are some of the polls that I've used. Um, so this was just uh, what are some things that teachers should, should know about you that would help you learn better. And this can be used um, both on the iPods and um, it could also be used if you didn't have a mobile device that it could be used on just a computer. Um, it can be used as a texting poll. Uh, this could be used uh, by Twitter. Students can email results. So you can decide how students respond to this and it gives all different results. And then as students respond, the um, results are posted as they're coming in. So you decide how the view looks, how people can respond, and then it can also be published as a, a PowerPoint. So this was something that was very successful in our classroom and uh, they were able to use it on the iPod and they were also able to uh, use this uh, on computers and create their own polls as well. I wanted to share this one as well. This was something that I felt like it's important to focus more on questions that at the beginning of the school year use questions that really focus on the students as a whole and not just as um, academics. Uh, too often I think we forget about things that we can learn about kiddos from a question like this. So I thought that this was interesting, um, these results. So I wanted to share that one. 
but after a lesson on nonfiction text, um, this is a sample question that I might have used for a lesson there. So, which is something you can find in almost all nonfiction books. Based on this question, I might have been able to tell whether or not the students needed further work with this lesson. So, that's how I might have used this. And this makes for much more independent learning because students are working at their own pace. I also liked um, something like this because you can differentiate with this one. Um, I had students who were finding books that were leveled books that we had already read, but then I also had a student who was locating uh, reference books, which is something we hadn't talked about yet. So it really offers more for differentiation. So the next thing um, is Twitter. And this was something that has been mainly used for uh, reading and writing. Um, I thought it was interesting ideas um, to present to the kids, uh, showing them the 140 character limit because kiddos are usually wanting to know how much do I have to write. When they saw that they are only allowed to write 140 characters, it was almost um, interesting to see that sometimes they had to condense what they had to say. So this was um, a collaboration tool. Um, we've tried to um, link to some other resources and educational websites as well. Um, a lot of the things that we've been posting have been sharing with other um, other pages and directly posting pictures of their work so that they can talk about what they posted, why, uh, make connections with each other, share resources. They really enjoy seeing their work. So I go on every now and then and respond to some of them as well. So there were some predictions that were made. And then this right here was a response that I had wrote back to them. It also gives time for me to, if I type out a kiddo's name in there, I'm able to go back and um, use this for an assessment later. So this has also been a great assessment tool as well. Um, the Intervention by Design Data Management Tool, um, although this site wasn't the actual tool that was used by students, um, part of this was the um, inquiry. They were using the iPod as the part, um, they would use the note app. So if you saw in the pictures on the slideshow, this is where they were typing their answers to the quiz and they were actually submitting a um, test answer right here. So they were looking at a test and they were submitting the answer and the data management tool is where I would track all of their results. So based on those results I can link to this tool here, which is also accessible from the iPods. So the reason that I included this was I wanted them to be able to track their own data. Um, all of my students do data folders so that they can graph their own results over time. And um, this allows the students to see their progress. So on here they can go, they can view um, they can view their scores and they can see they got 2 out of 2, 2 out of 5, two out, 3 out of 3, and 2 out of 3 and they can graph those scores and then see their improvement or whether they went down and then that is their incentive to do better next time. 
um, Bookshare.org. I'm sure you've heard of um, this tool before. Um, this was something that several of my kiddos qualify for um, as a tool to download books for reading. Um, so this is something that's able to be differentiated since some are higher and some are lower instructional levels. And they can also get the audiobooks. So this is here as a tool for um, downloading the books for um, accessible print. So that tool is just there for reference. Um, Class Dojo Behavior Management is probably something I use the most. Um, this is what I use in my classroom for behavior management. Um, I love the fact that it's completely customizable and it's a positive behavior support. Um, I also have a student that is on, um, several students actually, that are on individual behavior plans. Um, I'll show you the classes that I have set up for my class. I have helped several teachers get started with this, so there's going to be a few different links for this. My class here has all of my students and they get points for various um, behaviors so being a good friend, best listener, finished an assignment, following directions on task and working hard but they can also lose points based on disrespect, disrupting class, not following directions, off task or unprepared and there's various rewards um, for reaching certain incentives so if they get to five um, they can get a piece of candy or if they get to ten they can um, earn something from the treasure box. Um, there have been um, times we've used the timer for certain things and um, at the end of every week um, you can reset the bubbles. Um, they use the app on the iPod to track their behavior and they can give and, re and take um, the points on the iPod but I keep this up on my smart board during the day. Um, but then I also use this for the reports as well, so the students can pull this up and they can see how they're doing. Um, back on here, there's a Google Drive Class Dojo live form. I have one student who's on an individual behavior plan. So he had, if you notice, there's um, one student with a class of his own. So if you see he has his own class and he's by himself and he carries one iPod with him during the day. So he has his own class and at the end of each day I go to this form and I track how many positive and how many negative points he earned and any comments regarding his day and then that will go to um, the Google Drive document and that will um, keep track of all of his behaviors and give us a chance to um, bring up his information during um, any meetings that we might have and then we can access all the information without trying to track it otherwise. Um, the So all the information that is recorded daily at the live form um, eventually goes here and um, gets tracked. So anytime I go and I enter it, it's a timestamp and it goes here and that way it's tracked. So I love this site. I would recommend this to anyone. Um, using, trying to find something to use for a behavior plan. Um, all the behaviors and icons are completely customizable and all the reports are there. There's a lifetime range so no data is ever lost. You don't have to track anything. It's great for RTI and it's completely customizable for the kids and all the behaviors are customizable. So it is a great site and um, that's probably my favorite of all of the sets that I used and it's got an app for the iPod as well.